like a turd in the wind. How's it going everybody? So today we're getting our first venture into this Sony Spider-Man character universe, Venom. By the way, I'm announcing the winner for the digital code for Solo A Star Wars Story towards the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that if you're here for that. But uh, yeah, Venom, I mean, ever since the first trailer for this dropped, I've really been cautiously optimistic because there have been some parts of those trailers I thought looked pretty good. And there's also some parts from those trailers I thought looked pretty bad. And then you obviously got the tomato score reveal last night, and it was very low. I think at, the, at right now it's a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty low. I mean, let's be real here. So I figured, okay, well, this is like a perfect storm of bad and mixed reactions to this film. So let's just dive into my thoughts for the film. By the way, if you didn't see by the title, it is spoiler free. So you don't got to worry about that here. Do I think this film is worthy of a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes? No, but I mean, this film does have a fair amount of flaws. I mean, to start off with, like I was worried about with the trailers. I mean, this film has such a very thin plot. I mean, you, it doesn't even seem like the characters even know what's going on for the most part. Because we as the audience don't really know... I mean, what's going on for the most part of this film as well. I mean, it gets going eventually, but there's really not much there as far as plot goes, so it just seems like a scattered events coming throughout the whole film that they kind of connect a little bit, but it just seems like they just go from piece to piece and there's no cohesion for the actual story we're watching. It's just, you just jump from one crazy moment to the next. The script for the film just felt like it needed another rewrite or two, just a little bit more polished to actually make it like a decent film, make it more interesting, but it seemed like they just ignored that just to rush this film out in the theaters. Unfortunately, other than Tom Hardy, it seemed like most of the actors in this film weren't really trying their best to give a really great performance because Michelle Williams is just criminally underused in this film. I mean, she's a great actress and I was excited for her role in this film just because it seemed like out of her comfort zone when you come to like, when you look at her, you know, IMDP page for the stuff that she takes roles for, I mean, this doesn't seem like a film up her alley and I can see why because she's really not used that much in this film just completely wasted like she gets a couple scenes here and there but she really is just on the outskirts of most of the movie and I really I feel like you could have just not had her in the film and it would have really not made much of a difference you just have like the fact that you know that's Eddie Brock's girlfriend fiance wife in the comic books so you got to have her in this as well and not only that but Riz Ahmed who's another actor that is actually pretty good he just seemed like a very stereotypical generic villain in this film that I mean he he has a couple moments where he kind of tells you what he wants to do but it's not really like an interesting villain plot like you very you've seen it very much before in other films it's very stereotypical it's nothing really interesting you really get no depth into this character other than like he's an evil rich jerk like there's really no backstory to his character other than he's rich and He's a horrible person. Another thing I was really iffy about going into this film was if the CGI holds up, because some of it in the trailers did look like it would be pretty good. And there are scenes where Venom, you know, in his action, doing all that stuff in the suit, it looks really good, but woof. Some of the CGI in this film is just rough to look at, especially with that end battle scene with Riot, because you really have no idea what the hell's going on for large ch chunks of this final battle, because, you know, it's just a bunch of tendrils and giant monsters fighting and really shaky cam and really bad editing, actually. Like, it's supposed to be the climactic end battle, and half the time you really don't know what the hell is going on, and it also doesn't help the fact that Venom and Riot look very similar. I mean... One's black and one's gray. I mean, other than that, like, you can tell, like, subtle differences, you know, just, like, how, you know, there are different things that they can do, but... I mean, for th most people are really probably going to be confused which one is which. And for it being the final battle of the film, it didn't feel like it was very satisfying because it really didn't go on for that long. And it just, uh, it, I just felt very unsatisfied leaving that final battle scene in the film. There are a couple positives to this film. There are some action scenes, like I said before, that actually are very entertaining. They're just few and far between. And, you know, with a little bit of tweaks could have been a much more exciting and a better film. Not only that, like I said, Tom Hardy does a great job. One of the highlights of this film for me definitely is his whole relationship bonding with Venom. Like, that whole relationship is very reminiscent of the comics. I think they did a very good job with the whole relationship between the symbiote and Eddie Brock. Because it made for some really entertaining moments. I mean, not only action-wise, but just funny-wise. Because some of their moments together were actually really funny. Although some of them didn't always land. But for the most part, I did think their whole relationship was funny. You know, between, you know, doing what's right and what's wrong. You know, killing only bad people. Stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of inner turmoil that actually goes for some really entertaining moments. That I actually... Are some of the actual highlights of this film for me. I mean, there's not, like, too much I was happy with. But I was happy that they at least got that aspect of the character correct. 
Overall, I don't think I could say this is a good film. I mean, there are parts that I did enjoy. I mean, there is some entertainment in this film somewhere, but I can't really say I liked more than I disliked. So, I mean, there are aspects that you will enjoy when you see this film, but I think there there's more to dislike than like. It's not as bad as this Rotten Tomato score is, though. It's not like an abomination, like a fan force stick or something along those lines. But I get, I mean, I would be, I'm, I'm interested enough if they make a sequel because they leave you with enough where you feel like, okay, well, we got the origin story out of the way. Let's see what he can do in a sequel if they give him a little bit more to do. And not only that, but the PG-13 rating really didn't hurt this movie that much, I don't feel, because, I mean... I really don't feel like an R rating would have really done too much. But those are just my thoughts on Venom. Leave a comment in the comment section down below what you thought of the film when you check it out or if you plan on checking it out or don't plan on checking it out. Let me know. Thank you so much for checking out my little review though. Feel free to leave a like, hit that subscribe button. All right, so I have everyone's name in that entered for the Solo A Star Wars Story digital HD copy and let's find out who is going to win this digital HD code. Okay, Chris Manning, I guess... You're the winner of the digital HD code. Let me know on Twitter or Instagram. You know, what's the best way to get this code to you? Just let me know. Leave a comment here or on any of the social medias that you know that I have. And I'll get that to you as soon as I can. And also congrats to the winner on the digital HD code for Solo Star Wars Story. I really enjoyed doing this giveaway. I'll probably end up doing more of these down the line. So make sure you stick around and stay subscribed to see, you know, when I do more of these unboxing slash giveaways. But thanks so much. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.